to start Bengals offense line, defense line. How do you yeah. see that matchup Bengals offense versus the Rams defense? Do you see an edge going one way or the other? How do you feel that's going to break down throughout the course of this game? Um, I think it could be one of these games where I think the Rams defense maybe early will kind of get after Burrow. And, you know, it, it may kind of not that I'm going to say Burrow's going to get deer in the headlights because I don't even think he's capable of that, but just maybe the team all in general coaching staff. Um, yeah. So uh, that I'm a little concerned about. I could see the Rams defensive line maybe dominating somewhat early but the Bengals kind of pulling it together getting it together they've shown that they can do that and come back on teams that's kind of what I'm predicting when it comes to you know the Rams defensive line against the concerning offensive line there the Bengals I do think you know Jamar Chase I think he'll get his um and I, yeah. I just think as this game goes on maybe I'm just trying to talk it into existence but I mean I see both these quarterbacks going like over 275 yards passing I don't hate it. I mean, <laughs> a couple points there that hit on the Jamar Chase, Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Ramsey. I, I know it's your bra- bravado. You're a hell of a corner, but like yeah. you did just get burnt like toast by Mike Evans. Maybe calm down. I'm calling out yeah. really good wide receivers right now. <laughs> I was just, I, <laughs> told the horses. That. Especially electric, just who I'd say um, after Tyreek Hill's by the second fastest person in the NFL. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he might need some help and that's okay. A hundred percent. As well as I think Richard Sherman was the one that says this, like chase has got the advantage because Ramsey is not going to man up, press him all game. So there's going to be, a, there, he's yeah. going to leave space for him to maneuver. Um, so it is a dangerous matchup there. It's funny. You mentioned the dead the deer in the headlights thing with Joe Burrow and like how that's probably not going to happen. But the concern is the coaches. I a hundred percent agree <laughs> that I am concerned about, and I'm going to clarify my comments on Zach Taylor here in a minute, but the Zach Taylor deer in the headlights, but I don't think this is an unreasonable statement to say that, like, I have no worry about Joe Burrow because thinking about him breaking down, Joe Burrow has played in bigger games than Matthew Stafford, which is crazy to say. But with Matthew Stafford being in the Lions, Joe Burrow winning a national championship in college, being on those Ohio State teams, like, Joe Burrow's a little bit more familiar with the insane pressure filled atmosphere than Matthew Stafford probably going into this one. I've never really thought of that, but I 100% agree with it. Um, I- and it's all and it's all recent for Burrow. Mm-hmm. I mean, Stafford. I'm not even really act like I really know how his Georgia teams were. I don't even know how big a games he played in. Probably huge games. I don't they're know. Pretty, but that yeah, was, pretty good. That was a long time ago, dude. He had no Sean Moreno and AJ Green on that team, and they somehow didn't win a national championship. So <laughs> unbelievable. That's like Baffles those Clemson, me. those Clemson teams that had DeAndre Hopkins, Sammy Watkins, and Martavis Bryant. What? <laughs> how did you not throw for ten thousand yards? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh um, yeah. And, and it's sort of that aspect of like, you don't know what you don't know yet. So there is like a little bit, I think less pressure with the younger group. I don't think they get kind of deer in the headlights. They have yeah. a lot of one um, kind of winners mentality on the Bengals, which is interesting. And you see it like they have, they have the never die attitude. They're always, always think they're inside the games, like the comeback they had against the chiefs, which was a partial meltdown by the chiefs, which we talked about and a big effort by the Bengals who went yeah. out and won that game. Um, Zach Taylor concerns me. Because I think I should kind of clarify because I live in Cincinnati. I've run into some friends who have been listening to the podcast and are giving me crap for Zach Taylor and my picks on him. I still think it's very accurate. We all know coaches who have won Super Bowls who maybe weren't like the best. I think Zach Taylor is an awesome guy. He gets it for the city of Cincinnati. He seems like a great dude. He understands what it means to the city. He's going around giving game balls out to local bars after they win playoff games. He's endeared himself to the city. He seems like a great guy. But when it comes to the X's and O's, he is incredibly predictable and runs an incredibly simplistic offense that they seem to be winning in spite of, not because of. What do I mean by this? And this is something my girlfriend is a diehard Bengals fan, and she is like about to punch me every game because it is so predictable. If if Joe Burrow's behind center, it's a run. If he's in shotgun, it's a pass. And I just sit there, call it out, and then it's like, yeah, that's exactly what I... Like, I know it's sitting on my couch what's going to happen. You damn know Sean McVay who mentored this guy who pulled him basically off the street into the NFL and gave him his start in his, his entire mentorship in the NFL is going to know that. I mean, it is so predictable that when you combine um, pass rates from shotgun and run rates from under center, it is the most predictable offense in the NFL. I got this from another podcast. Um, Payne Insider gave this set out, so I'm not claiming this one. He went and broke it down. If the Bengals are in two wide receiver formation, 
75% chance of a run. If they're three wide receiver sets, 33% chance. It's just a predictable offense. And if the Rams know that I have a lot of concern with a defense that has a defensive line win pass rush rate of first in the league and a offense line who's bottom two in the league in that category. Yeah. The defense line knowing, oh, he's in shotgun. I can pin my ears back and go after him. That's a big tell. So Zach Taylor's got to change it up. And he just hasn't really seemed to do that. And he's young in his coaching career. And the Bengals are way ahead of schedule. I mean, they have, what, the third most cap space, I think, going into the offseason. They have insane talent. You still got great players on rookie deals early in their rookie deals, too. Like, the future is bright if Zach Taylor can put it together. But I think that is that is what I mean when I criticize Zach Taylor. Is It's just he isn't, he isn't changing anything. He isn't doing anything to disguise anything. And that, it's worked so far because they've sort of had a horseshoe up their ass. But I do kind of worry about that in this big game. Yeah, I mean... That's a great point. Just bringing up how the Bengals predictability is sucks because it just the, the biggest strength on the, the Rams defense is just going to capitalize on it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's super concerning. I mean, you're in shotgun Von Miller and Aaron Donald, they know you're passing. I mean, that's, that's, that's a bad situation. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and we saw with the chiefs who were, they just unfortunately didn't capitalize, oh, you know, yeah. Chris Jones, I mean, Burrow escaped Chris Jones, but like, Every first down, just running it up the A-gap and getting stuffed. It's just a waste of a down. And then you're relying on Joe Burrow to be perfect on third down without even trying to bypass it. He does become perfect, but this is a better defense than the Chiefs defense. And so yeah. can they still produce it? I still think they can because I think the linebackers for the Rams are pretty sorry in coverage. Safety's Eric Weddle's a great story, but like there's a deficiency there. There are guys that you can attack in that secondary and they match up really well. It's just like, man, Zach Taylor's got to throw a little spice in there. Instead of using salt and pepper, maybe throw a little garlic salt in there. Like, let's get something going here <laughs> that throws a little off beat. Because Sean McVay, is, I would assume, is going to have, and um, the Rams defense are going to be ready for this, given they know Zach Taylor very, very well, given yeah. he grew up in their program. Um, anything else before we slip, flip the sides of the ball here? Uh, no, not, not much. Let's talk Rams offense versus Bengals defense. This is an interesting matchup from my perspective. Do- 